Well, there's some progress, but we are a long ways from normal. That was the governor's message today, flanked by retail and hospitality leaders. King 5's Drew Mickelson joining us live now with what we learned about a possible June 1st reopening, Drew. Yeah, Joyce, a lot of folks have circled June 1st as the day that they can get that haircut or maybe go back to their favorite restaurant. And the governor did not rule that out today, but he said it's just too early to say if we can go back to those sorts of businesses that soon. He also alluded to the fact that he may be willing to compromise on one of his more controversial proposals regarding restaurants. Towards the end of his press conference this afternoon, he said that making restaurants keep logs of who their customers are may end up just being an option. He says we'll hear more about that in the next few days. Inslee said he is hopeful on-site education will resume in the fall, but said educators are learning a lot about what can be done remotely, both good and bad. And he says there's no guarantee we'll see that phase two June 1st with the reopening of restaurants, hair and nail salons. As far as fully reopening the state? We're a long ways from getting back to normal economic activity. It's just a long ways away from that because we know that the numbers are still so high in our virus that it just can't justify opening up all these businesses right now. It'd just be titanically too dangerous to do that. Joining the governor this afternoon were members of both the Auto Dealers Association and the Retailer Association saying that their members are excited to be back open, even, even with lots of restrictions under the phase one. There was also someone from the Hospitality Association here saying that restaurant owners are eager to open back up. But coming up at 630, you'll hear how some restaurant owners aren't so eager, at least until they can fully reopen. Live at the Capitol, Drew Mickelson, King 5 News. Drew, thank you. Just into the King 5 newsroom, the Emerald Queen Casino in Tacoma is reopening on Monday. The casino, off I-5, will reopen its doors at 10 o'clock in the morning. They're able to do this since the casino is on tribal land and the tribes can make reopening decisions independent of the governor's office. The casino will be taking a long list of precautions, including taking temperatures and also limiting how many people can be inside that casino at any one time. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic dealt a huge blow to the Seattle cruise ship industry today. Seattle-based Holland America announced it's laying off or furloughing almost half of its workforce. That's about 2,000 people, mostly in Seattle, California, and Alaska. I talked with Holland America CEO Stein Cruz today about the layoffs. He's been with the company for more than 20 years and calls this the saddest day of his business life. The, the thing I feel worst about is that every one of my colleagues who will no longer be my colleagues have not done anything to cause this. It is not that we made wrong bets or that we made bad investments or that we did business decisions that didn't uh, work out. It is something that has been brought us and uh, the result is that people, good people, uh, are losing their jobs. Right now, the cruise industry is under a no-sale order. It's set to expire in July, but the CDC could extend it beyond that. So what will reopening the cruise industry look like? Any way to operate a cruise ship uh, under conditions if, there, if there's not a vaccine? I mean, how would you operate a cruise ship um, if this virus is still out there? Well, I think we would operate very similar to what other resorts, theme parks, hotels, uh, would also be operating under. Everybody is looking now at what will the protocols be, what are the sanitation uh, requirements, what are the social distancing requirements. So it's important to remember before the COVID-19 outbreak, the cruise industry dealt with contagious diseases all the time, like the norovirus. So they already have detailed protocols in place to deal with COVID-19. But here's the big question. Will the traveling public come back? That's a big unknown right now, and there is a lot of money riding on all this. The Port of Seattle normally sees about 225 cruise ship visits a year, each ship pouring about a million dollars into the local economy. So that is a quarter of a billion dollars in revenue that's not coming into Seattle right now. Just major blows in lots of ways, Mark. Wow. Well, more than 109,000 new unemployment claims were filed in Washington just last week. That brings the total in our state to nearly 1.8 million since the start of this pandemic. 
The only positive news is that it has dropped from the peak that we saw in late March and April. And the expectation is the numbers will continue to decline. The Employment Security Department is now working on two major challenges, clearing the backlog of roughly 50,000 claims and fighting fraud. Imposter fraud is rampant. That's when someone tries to open a fake account using someone else's personal information. And because of that, the state is going to withhold paying people for at least the next two days. We will be able to hold those payments for an additional one or two days so we can validate claims as authentic. Again, we apologize for the hardship this may cause to some valid claimants, but it is a step that we as an organization and as responsible individuals taking care of taxpayer dollars need to take. The ESD says that it's dealing with fraud on two fronts. There are people also lying on their applications, but the ESD itself has not experienced a data breach. Well, nationally, new unemployment claims have not slowed as much as analysts had hoped. Last week, 2.981 million people filed for unemployment. That's slightly lower than what we've seen for the past six weeks. Since the coronavirus crisis began, 36.5 million Americans have lost their jobs. No graduation, no prom, and now no test results. A widespread glitch in testing is causing even more headaches for the class of 2020. It's affecting students all over the country, including one aspiring computer science student in Snohomish County. King 5's Eric Wilkinson is in Mill Creek tonight. Along the path toward college, Ryland Casanova has experienced more than a few bumps. Coronavirus disrupted his school year and turned his future upside down. Blows just keep coming. And it's like, what else? This is what else. When Ryland was taking his AP physics test on Monday, he couldn't submit it, no matter what he did. He took this video to provide proof of his predicament. I'm just thinking about, like, what will I do? Like, is my score going to be a zero? Will I not be able to get my college credit? What's going to happen? The advanced placement test Ryland and about a million more students are now taking determine whether they'll get college credit for work done in high school. When his mom found out about the issue, she posted to Facebook and immediately found dozens of others experiencing the very same problem. She contacted a company called the College Board that administers the test and got a canned response. When I called today, I was put on hold for more than 20 minutes. Welcome to the College Board Advanced Placement Services for Students and Parents. And then abruptly disconnected. People really need to be accountable, and I would expect him to be accountable, right? And, and I think that that's probably one lesson that they can kind of take away, and I think that's where College Board needs to step up. A reported 10,000 students have experienced the glitch, and it still isn't exactly clear what caused it. Ryland now has to make up the test in June. His mom wonders what will happen then. We don't know why it didn't submit, and what's to say now when you go to do it again in June that it's not going to, you're not going to be met with the same issues. It's just one more disappointment for Ryan and the class of 2020. The biggest lesson he's learned through it all, resiliency. It makes me proud as a parent, but it, it, it's, it's just hard. I mean, it, it's really hard what these kids have had to endure this year. Eric Wilkinson, King 5 News.